Welcome back, folks. It's another beautiful day here, Art of the City. We are streaming here from San Diego, California. I'm your host, Ruth Ann Thorne. And I want to first start the show today just thanking everyone for the incredible amount of support that's been coming into the show. It's really uh, quite overwhelming. There's just been so many great comments that have been coming my way. Um, private messages, all kinds of support, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, but not just for myself, but for the guests that we're bringing on to the show. For those of you who have been following, you know we have devoted the month of August to Native American culture, and we really have seen some amazing artists come on. We have one coming on today, but this last show that we did on Friday, I just, um, if you haven't had a chance to watch it live, we have it on YouTube, go to Art of the City TV and take a look at the Nakota Lawrence tribute that was happening on Friday. It was, um, it was so touching. I was really on cloud nine all weekend long thinking about the love that was poured out onto this young person's life and how he affected the world. And, really made such a uh, statement for who we are as native people. So take a look at that. Today, I have another great talent coming on, Carrie Morin, and he is uh, from the Crow Nation. He has been a professional musician for many, many years, and he has this talent that um, he's gonna bless us with a, a little song today. But one of the things I think is really important as you're watching these series of Art of the City, is taking the content that we provide for you folks and really sharing it onto your platform. The whole point of Art of the City started from me as an art dealer wanting to give back to the world in the very small way that I can through art, music, culinary arts, through the creatives during this COVID time because a lot of people have been shut in and we are just inundated with all of the things that are going on in the media and most of it's negative. And this is just a way of kind of counteracting all that negativity. So without further ado, let me see if I can get Carrie to come on the line here and we will have a really nice chat with him and then have some music. Are you there, Carrie? I think I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to our the city. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing really well. Thank you, Ruth Ann. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Oh, well, the pleasure is definitely mine. Um, please tell the folks where you're streaming from. Uh, I am in my living room in Fort Collins, Colorado. All right. <laughs> I love Colorado. One of my dear friends, Allison, She's your neighbor up there. She's been sending me pictures of uh, all the hiking she's been doing. It's just such a beautiful time of year where you folks are at. So uh, you're lucky. Yeah, the mountains are full of people right now. I think everybody has uh, plenty of time on their hands to do that sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's kind of hard to find a camping spot these days. Well, I had a gallery in Breckenridge, Colorado for about three years. So I got an opportunity to really, you know, explore kind of some of the back areas. And I didn't realize just how gorgeous it is. And we were even tempted to maybe move there at one point, but uh, San Diego is a good second. Sure. Yeah. I used to play up there. Uh, I used to play at Meech's Mogul in, uh, in Breckenridge. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, that is such a, that's a cool haunt. And we used to listen to music there when we were up there as well. So that's great. So let's talk a little bit about you. I'd like to first ask you just about your background, um, being a native person and which side of your family you, you get the native blood or both sides. And what was it like as a, a child, you know, growing up as a native person? Well, um, um, I, my father was in the Air Force, so um, I was born in Billings, and then um, then I think we moved to Tacoma after that, and then um, I spent most of my time growing up in Great Falls, Montana, and uh, it was a 
it was a nice place to be. Uh, it was a nice place to grow up. There's um, uh, a lot of really uh, interesting musicians that were there in the 60s and 70s that uh, got me interested in playing music. So it was, it was fun to grow up around that. Were either of your parents from an Indian reservation or grew up on a reservation? Yeah, my father was, uh, he was from uh, Wolf Point, Montana. Okay. And uh, my mother was from Crow Agency. Okay. Yeah. So are both your parents then Native American? Yes. And so you're full? Well, I, w I wouldn't say that because there's a lot of... Uh, um european and canadian blood that goes way back uh so uh, yeah i'm not full of anything really okay <laughs> human <laughs> being <laughs> nor am i you know that we we call ourselves you know like a mixed uh, res dog is a good term <laughs> yeah. which means that you don't know who who came from what but you know you're related that's for sure if you go on the indian reservation and you meet someone, if you just spend about a half an hour with them, you find out they're your cousin, so. Right, yeah, that's always fun. So your dad was in the Air Force, and did you jump around a lot then, growing up? A little bit. Uh, I, think, uh, I think other families moved around a lot more than we did. Um, he really finished his career out in Great Falls, Montana, and, um, you know, he was there for, oh, 20 years or something like that. They eventually moved to Helena after I left home, but, um, yeah, I, I think that he was kind of a popular guy uh, in the, um, uh, in the uh, department that he worked in, and, and he got to um, pick and choose what he did, I think, because of that. And did you have an opportunity to have your native um, culture nurtured with either of your uh, parents? Yeah, we uh, we spent a lot of time on the Crow Reservation um, because we only lived. It was like a four-hour drive um, okay. to get to um, my mother's father's place, and. Uh, so we we spent a decent amount of time there, um, and I have, of course, lots and lots of relatives, uh, uh, you know, around the Billings area. Any particular relative, like your grandfather, that you got anything special from your culture that you've brought into your music? Mm, you know, I don't. As a songwriter, I, I write about life and, um, you know, the stuff around me. I, I think that uh, naturally, since I'm native, some of that gets into the music, but that's not really my, my focus. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's, there's a lot of songs that have to do with the... Uh, Indianness. Well, I think it comes out. I mean, I know that some people have had an opportunity to be close to the reservations that that their family is from, and some people haven't. But I think the commonality from natives that I've spoken to is this um, really strong pull to nature and to animals and to spirit, and it comes out somehow a lot of times within the creatives, whether it's music or food or art, that's what I'm seeing. And that's what's been really great about bringing on people who have that background onto the show this month is that we're seeing that there's a thread that pulls through from this bloodline from being here on this continent. So I like to ask these questions to see, and maybe you haven't even thought about that. No, I hadn't really. So let's go back to your music. When did you first start uh, playing the guitar? How old were you? Oh, I think I was um, 
I was about 12, I think. I, my, uh, my first instrument was piano. And uh, I think I took piano lessons for about seven years. And I, there was always guitars around the house. <clears throat> and uh, I think when my, my brother went off to college, he left the, this old Yamaha classical guitar behind. And I picked that up and I, for some reason, I could just play it. I, um, it, it was really easy for me. And uh, so I, I spent an awful lot of time because we lived out in the, a little bit outside of town and there weren't any kids around. So I, I played guitar a lot. <laughs> and what kind of music were you influenced by when you were that age, when you were a teenager? Radio stuff. Uh, my, I was I was influenced by like the the albums that my older brothers had and my friends' older brothers, and uh, the albums that my uh, my parents listened to, which was predominantly country. Okay. Uh, country music was still good back in the seventies, and uh, I. Uh, got turned on to uh, different guitar players, um, David Bromberg and um, guys like James Taylor and all the all the usual folk albums that everybody had at the time. Right. You know, there was old, always a Cat Stevens album. There was always a Carol King album. Um, all the great classics from the 60s, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I listened to it all. I didn't really understand um, the concept of genres. I, I just, if I heard music and I liked it, it was good music. So um, uh, I ended up listening to all, all kinds of stuff from classical music to, um, to rock and roll. That's awesome. So when did you first get involved with playing with a band or were you primarily doing solo um, performance? I did both actually. I, I played with a, um, with a band in high school and we traveled around Montana a little bit. And um, I, I was playing like solo acoustic shows at that time too. And then and playing duo shows with a friend of mine and uh, I moved to Colorado right after high school. I think I got here when I was like 19. And, um, and I just, I continued playing solo shows and uh, eventually with bands. And uh, now it's back to the uh, solo shows. <laughs> I, okay. I, do a, um, I do a duo with my uh, wife, Celeste. And oh, we, nice. Yeah, we travel around the country. And it's, oh, that's it's, great. That's a wonderful life. We enjoy it. It's really nice when you can partner with someone um, where you have the same passions, whether it's art or music. And I always think it's especially um, rare for two people to be able to travel together and work together. And it's always really nice to hear when you're able to do that then you don't have to be away from the ones that you love. Yeah, we, uh, we have this RV that, um, that suits all of our needs. And um, we spend a lot of time in the south and uh, along the east coast. And we go out to California every once in a while and um, around the Midwest. So, so we, how many years have you been playing music professionally? Oh, I think I started when I was 14, so um, uh, like 40 years or 35 years, something like that. That's incredible. I, I didn't really qualify for anything else. <laughs> well, you luckily, because the world wouldn't have your great talent. <laughs> Thank you. So that's actually a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> And you write music, you play music. Have you, I know when I read your bio, you had spent some time in Japan and you had been working with some pretty big productions. 
are you still pursuing? I know we can't do that right now because of COVID, but have you been traveling to other countries? Yeah, I, um, I've been doing shows in Europe for oh, uh, about the last 10 years, I guess. I, I played okay. guitar in a trio and um, that's kind of where I learned how to do what I do by watching that band leader, um, Budafe, um, do what she does. And then um, uh, my work with her slowed down a little bit and I started doing solo shows and started doing uh, tours in Europe and the US. Uh, and what countries own. are you going to carry in Europe? Oh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I'm going to the Netherlands and to um, Germany and Italy and France. And um, <coughs> I've done shows in Spain and um, just pretty much all over Europe. That's a lot of countries. Any favorite countries? Well, we spent an awful lot of time in France, and um, I like that. I really like going to Italy. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the songs that um, I wrote for this last album that I did uh, were actually written in Italy. Nice. Well, we'd love to hear some of your music, and it you know, when I'm reading your bio, it was really tough for me to figure out what to ask you because you've had such a, a long, rich career and you've been so many different places. And I know being native, that is playing into a part of who you are, but then again, your, your music isn't really being pushed in that direction. So I wanted to just kind of feel you out and see if there was a connection there. But I think that listening, I listened to quite a bit of your music too over the weekend. So I do feel that you have that spirit within what you're playing, whether you recognize it or not, I think it's definitely there. But I know the viewers are like, cut it Ruth Ann, so we can hear this great man play. So let's do that. And I'm gonna reduce my screen so that we can give you more of the, the stage there. Okay. Well, thanks very much for the opportunity. I'll play a song. <laughs> Uh, uh, not off this last album, but the one before. Uh, that album was called Cradle to the Grave, and uh, this is the title cut. <laughs>
From the cradle to the grave That was beautiful. I love it. You just transported me, and I, I think everybody watching, I just felt like I was watching you on the stage, and I had a nice cocktail in my hand, and I'm at the bar, which I haven't been able to go anywhere. Like, you know, I you're not it. able to play anywhere, but you know what's nice is it's nice to listen to music and then feel like you're going into that setting that you miss so much. That, that was a beautiful song, and I love the lyrics. And you Thank won you. quite a few awards for that, didn't you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's nice to be recognized. Uh, I've, I've won some uh, uh, things up in Canada and around the U.S. And, yeah, it's, it's, it always makes me feel good like um, to know that somebody's actually listening to all the stuff that I create. It's, it's really great. So when you're writing, because that's a whole nother skill set, how do you approach that? Do you just get an inspiration, get a moment, and you're like, I've got to, I've got to write a song about this? Or do you, is it, you sit down on purpose? What's your process on that? Well, anymore, it's been, I've got an album that uh, I'm, I have to uh, record, so I have to write a bunch of songs. I think that I'm, <laughs> uh, the rest of the time, you know, when I'm not working on an album, um, I really, I really concentrate uh, and focus on just guitar playing. But uh, deadlines, pretty much, are what make the the, the songs happen. Yeah, that, I I can understand that for sure. What's your life like now, where you can't travel and you can't book these events and play live? How has that affected you as a musician? Oh, uh, well, you know, we we had just finished recording a, um, a new project in Louisiana and um, actually had just gotten it mastered in Nashville. And um, the process was mostly complete uh, in that that happened in early March, and uh, I was playing shows out uh, around Florida when this happened, and um, so we put the album out. We, we didn't know really what to do. I mean, right. around like mid March, nobody knew what to do. We we didn't know how long you know how long is this going to last, and you know now I think people have a, a better sense of. Of what's going on, but um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so I've just been here at home playing guitar uh, mostly. Uh, we we put an awful lot of effort into the release of this album, uh, and so there's a lot of work that comes along with that. Uh, the album came out on the seventh, so things are starting to calm down a little bit now. Okay, and I'm starting to think about uh, there's two album projects that I want to pursue. One with my band here in uh, Colorado, which is called Ghost Dog. And then um, I'd like to do another solo uh, acoustic album. Because I haven't really done a, like a 100% acoustic album in a couple of years. So that's on the horizon? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm starting to set stuff up around here. I usually do. Um, I, I record songs here. Um just to kind of get them all figured out, you know, and then I'll take them to a studio somewhere and um, and then record them for real. Do you have plans? Um, have you planned anything in the future for, you know, hoping that things open up or is everything just on hold still? Well, we, <clears throat> I think we just had got our last cancellation uh, from, everything that was scheduled uh, a couple weeks ago and we do uh we do schedule things um 
but it, it, we're not certain that any of it's going to happen, but we do have to try and at least make an effort to schedule things. And if, uh, you know, if we get lucky, we'll get to go right. do shows. We could, we could book like a number of shows around the country, but, uh, since most places are closed down, I can't, I can't drive to New York. Uh, because there's one show, I have to have like a whole bunch of other stuff to go along with it. So right. we're we're probably going to wait this one out for quite a few. Uh, yeah, it's been a tough thing, I think, for musicians, artists. Our shows were were closed down, and I think this is really right now the platform that we're having to learn how to utilize because we don't know how long this is going to uh, keep us at bay from being able to get out there and have groups of people. So are you doing some online? I know you did have something that you streamed, I believe on Saturday, or was it, yeah, Friday. Do you have other Saturday. things that the folks that are watching that they can tune into in the future? Yeah, I've, I've been doing shows every week actually, um, just because it keeps me um, playing guitar and it keeps me um, going, you know. Um, I, I play a show at a sound stage not far from my house called the launching pad uh, every Saturday at 7 p.m. Mountain. And um, okay. I, I do um, a live stream from right here uh, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Um, and sometimes I'll do an Instagram show. I haven't done one of those for a while, but yeah, we, we do those two shows and then whatever else comes up, um, do you just do those on the fly? Hey, let's do Instagram. Pick up your phone and do a tune. Uh, I used to schedule Instagram shows, but I don't anymore. So, um, yeah, if I do it, it will just be uh, uh, just because I felt like it, you know. Okay. Um, so, folks, make really sure you follow it. him because you never know. This could be like a little special treat during the day. <laughs> Carry more yeah. live. Hook on there and you can watch. I love that actually. I think that's that spontaneity is really great, especially right now. Because it's a little treat in somebody's day. Would you like to play us one more? Sure. Okay. Sure, I'll I'll play a song off the new album. Uh one of these songs actually is um is like number two in the nation right now on the acoustic blues charts. Um, the album is uh, called Dockside Saints. And um, this is one of the songs that we hope does really well. We'll, we'll see. This is called Jamie Ray. <laughs> Mama says you best stay home, son. 
No, that girl ain't for you Mama, I hear what you say But I gotta get to Jamie Ray Can't you hear me talking? Oh, babe, I hope you know it's true My mind can only see us too I can't stop thinking of you I'm gonna make a life for you Jamie Ray Jamie Ray so much what a great way to start a monday it's really oh, you know, it's just so nice to hear live music there's nothing like it and you are an incredible talent and i'm so appreciative for you to come and bring this beautiful music here to our show but also you know just bringing it to the world the fact that you've dedicated your whole life to it is pretty impressive well thank you i'm uh I'm really happy to have the opportunity to, to share things with people in a meaningful way. So yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. It's important. And I think right now more than ever, you know, just having the connection with folks, even if you can't see people in your audience, they're out there and they're watching you right now and you're bringing a lot of joy to people's lives. So thank you so much for doing that. And if people want to, support you by downloading your your music or buying cds can they um, purchase do you have a store on your website yeah yeah carrymorn.com okay we are streaming that here on our feed as well so folks i really appreciate it if you go out support the artists you know somebody that's this talented your work needs to be shared out there with the world so that everybody can hear all this hard work that you put into it and this passion that you have for your music. And I have one last question for you because as much as I love music, I'm a little bit of a amateur and novice when it comes to different styles. I noticed on your website that you refer to yourself as a picker and I was wondering if that's a certain genre of music or just a technique. Can you share a little bit about that? Well, what I do is, um, well, you know, for years I played electric guitar like like everybody else, and I um, I spent a lot of time uh, doing this finger picking thing that I do. It's called finger style guitar, and. Um, I finally just kind of gave up on electric guitar because there's so many guys out there that, that do it so well, but not a whole lot of people that do what I do. So, yeah, we call it a finger style acoustic. Um, I, I guess I've been s sort of uh, uh, described more, uh, more and more as a blues musician these days, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit of everything. Okay, so you just pulled it all together and that's your your genre. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was doing a show uh, somewhere in Colorado, and the the, um, the promoter was putting together advertising for it, and I, I had really just started playing acoustic shows again. Um, and he asked me what what do I call my music, and I didn't call it anything. You know, I just call it music. And uh, he's he's. I said, maybe, you know, it's kind of like Americana. Um, is that genre probably fits? And he said, well, let's call it Native Americana. I so love it. I've been, I've been using that ever since. I thought, oh, yeah, that's kind of clever. I love it. Well, we are the original Americans. Indeed. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on the show. We'll definitely support your music and Saturday nights, folks, is another opportunity to tune in to Carrie's live streaming show, and that streams on Facebook. 
right? Yes, and, and YouTube. And YouTube. Okay, so go to his page. Uh, YouTube, really important. Go on there and subscribe because I know the more subscribers, the more content gets pushed out there. So that's a big help. Thank you so much, Carrie. And I hope to have you back on the show. And really what I hope is that I can come see you live at some point soon and uh, sit in the audience with my cold one and give you a real applause. <laughs> I'd like that very much. Okay, well, we'll stay in touch then. Folks, Carrie, it's Morin, right? Am I pronouncing it yes. right? Carrie yes. Morin, thank you for blessing us today. It was a real, real treat for us on this Monday. My pleasure. Okay, we'll see you again. Okay, thank you, Ruzan. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Great way to start the week, folks, with beautiful music and not just music that is really touching to the soul, but from someone who has devoted their whole lives to doing this. And I think that's the platform that Art of the City is all about, is bringing in talent, creatives that have taken their whole lifetime and poured into whatever their discipline is, whether it's music or art or cooking or whatever it is, it's important that we recognize these folks because they're the ones that are really bringing that energy of what we really want our lives to look like uh, into the world. So we have some really, we're gonna have a busy, busy week this week and I had to take a minute to write it all down. But rather than doing our Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're just gonna go for it this week. We have a show every single day this week I have no idea how that happened, but it did. And it's a really great way to finish out August. And my partner here who helps me with the technology, he is just said, what? What's going on here? Tomorrow we're gonna have Danny O'Keefe, who is a, uh, a great musician. We have a group coming out of Arizona, Native American Navajo group, or um, Dene, called Sihashsen. See Hassan, hopefully I'm saying that right. Then we have Joel, Joel Raphael coming in Thursday, another great musician. And we're gonna finish it out with one of the most important artists in Indian country, and that's Frank Buffalo Hyde. He's coming in on Friday, and he's an incredible artist. I love his name because he's Buffalo Hyde. I don't know how he got that name, but it's a really great name. So make sure you join us. Uh, we will be streaming every day, except for Thursday. We're gonna push that show out till 7 p.m. But please share the content with your friends. It's easy enough to do. If you're streaming on Facebook, all you have to do is share the page when we go live, and then it goes live on your page. And it really helps us build an audience, and it also helps all those creatives that are taking the time to come on the show. So I appreciate it. Have a great Monday. It's a great start of the week, and I'll see you tomorrow here, 4 p.m. live streaming Art of the City. Have a great night.